Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Wild and Uncut Podcast. I'm Christy Titus, and I am here at the Hunt Expo with my favorite person in Utah, Bridger Housley. Bridger, you're uh, 11 years old, yep. and uh, you're probably one of the most dynamic people I've ever met in my life. You're hilarious. I get told that a lot. Yeah, you're pretty. You told that a lot. So um, we met here a few years ago. Three Three years ago, I think, because yeah. I was trying to uh, get my mom. I was at our uh, fr- other friend's booth, and I was trying to uh, get my mom a present. So, yeah, went over to a booth, and you were you were sitting there, and then my mom found out and found out it was you. Yeah, and then ever, s- and then the next year I gave you a Valentine, and so on. He gave me a Valentine, and we've been together ever since. Well, haven't seen each other in like two years. Well, that's not our fault, though. Yeah, no. But even this year, you gave me a hat, I gave you one. That's right. We share. And I didn't wear mine today because I'm a bad girlfriend. Oh, it's fine. So, Bridger, what did you, you like rolled up to me yesterday and what did you say to me when you saw me? Yogi, uh, hang on for this one. Let's <laughs> say that. <laughs> Yogi, um, hang on for this one. <laughs> I, I rolled up with, um, on this to Christy Tice and said, I, so I heard you got married. Does your husband have a 200-inch deer? I didn't think so. No, I don't. He does not have a 200-inch deer. My wife never lets me hunt. Yogi says you never let him hunt. I don't believe that. I just... Well. I don't <laughs> believe that. I. Th- but what did you say after you said... I mean, seriously, you roll up, you're like, hey, I heard you got married. And I was like, yeah, I actually did. And you look at me and you're like, well, does your husband have a 200-inch deer? I didn't think so. I didn't think so, he says. And then you said what? I actually don't remember what I said after that. He needs to step up his game. I do remember saying that now. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and, and sorry, Yogi, but it's true. <laughs> Yogi, start, it is true. You need start, to step it up. <laughs> start going Start going hunting some more. Yeah, you need to really learn how to hunt. <laughs> Bridger, you need to teach him. Well, when the when, well in tw- um twenty twenty three when I go on my whitetail hunt, I'll give you some pointers. Yeah. So we have this we have this soiree planned. Um, hold on, just a second. I just want to double check that my my stuff's recording good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. All right. <clears throat> if it if I could, I'd be eating a peach ring right now, but I. We'll just hold off for another 25 minutes. We'll be good on the peach rings. As in a minute, I may need a drink. But it's That's okay. You can drink. It's, all, it's good. You can do that. All right. So 2023, we have a 12th birthday. Yep. Well, 20, January 14th in 2023, I will turn 12. Okay. January, or in maybe whenever the whitetail hunt is mm-hmm. that, that fall of that same year. We'll be whitetail hunting. That's right. So we have it planned already. We're, we're going to strategize this. Yep. And your friend, your friend is? My friend. The one that has the ranch. Oh, yeah. So we're going to take him to Colorado to hunt whitetail. I've got the perfect place in mind. And um, you're going to have an excellent trip. You're going to see elk and you're going to see deer and you're going to see turkeys and Maybe, may or may not try to shoot a deer. Maybe try to shoot a turkey. See well, what. probably not a turkey, but definitely. Oh, yeah. it's, you never just never know what's going to happen when yeah. you get out there and what we have tags for. So yeah, uh, but we we definitely have this plan. This is going to happen. It's your twelfth birthday present from me to you. All right, it's going to really solidify our relationship. Yep. Yeah, and Yogi can you know get some hunting tips. But Yogi can be the third wheel. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you could be the third wheel. <laughs> I love Bridger. <laughs> yep, Yogi. Yogi can be the third wheel. I mean, you go hunting. That's right. It's going to happen. So, Bridger, you went with Doyle Moss on the Arizona Strip. Yep. And you, uh, you know, you're giving my husband flack about not having a 205 inch deer, and and, and rightfully so. Speaking of it, this sin. is this is the 205 inch deer. Yep, 205, 205 and like, or it's like 205 and four eighths is what what we scored it. Okay. So, how did you end up going on the Arizona Strip? How did this all go down? Um. So when I was born, I was born with a disability which makes me very flexible. But since I was disabled, um, I got donated this tag from an organization that runs out of um, Arizona. You can buy this thing for like five bucks called Point Guard. So if you, so say like the guy that donated me this tag, he could get the tag and donate it. If he, if it was a bad year and the next year, it'd be a guarantee that he'd get it back again. Oh, okay. So next year he'll get, he'll get the same, he'll get the Arizona Strip tag, but you can only use it once. So he couldn't turn it in again next year and then get it in again. 2025. Mm-hmm. He could, like he turned it in this year, he'll get it next year. If he doesn't use it that, that year, he probably won't get it again. So somebody had got this tag and they donated it for you to have an opportunity to go yeah. hunt. Yeah, because it was a supposed bad year on the Arizona Strip, but I mean, looks I pretty good to me. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call it a bad year. No. But so tell me about your hunt. So you know, what was it like preparing for such a? I mean, this is a coveted hunt. People pay a lot of money to yeah. go down there. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I mean, this is a. I heard from my dad when we were down in St. George earlier that year that. He's watching the auction, and this ta- this this tag or the Arizona Strip tag sold for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's worth a lot more than your stitches you got yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but it was it was like I found out mm, maybe I want to say August. Mm-hmm. Didn't I was like sweet. I'm gonna go September. Sweet. I'm gonna go November or September. October. Sweet. End of October. I was like. Oh, crap. This is actually coming. Start in November. I was sitting there and I woke up one day and I was like, pressure's on. Crap. In like two days, I'll be in the, I'll be, um, in the Arizona Strip hunting, hunting big deer. And I mean, it was kind of funny. I took a week. I went to school that Monday, took the rest of the week off and we killed the deer the first day because we, but the first day that, or the day that we went down there, um, we looked at our trailer because we had loaded our Toyota in there yeah. for adventuring and what whatnot. And we look and we're like, one of our tires is bald and one of our tires is completely sticking out from the trailer. Oh we no. need to change these now or yeah. we're not going to make it down there. Like, yeah. we would make it halfway and they'd explode on the highway and we wouldn't make it. Oh, that would be a bad deal. So, two, maybe three hours later, we finally get them repaired. and But then we forgot... Because my brother um, earlier that week had made jerky or um, deer jerky, yeah. like our like pure homemade deer jerky wow. for our Arizona strip or for the Arizona strip hunt, and we had forgotten it. Oh, so we went boy. home, grabbed that, had to grab our friend. Finally, at maybe nine thirty, we finally roll up in our camp, sit down, but. You were just probably exhausted by then. Yeah, I took a nap on the way down there. Oh, I don't blame I you. I took a nap, so I felt That's like... That's what Yogi does when I'm driving. I felt like 15 minutes of the drive, and really on the way home, I didn't sleep on the drive home, and it was like a two-hour dirt road. Like, oh I boy. had fallen asleep for a while. Yeah. But we roll into the camp, and the, the hunter that was there before me was rolling out and went, well, good luck. I've been here for five days and saw one buck, and I killed it. And it was a 100... So, I mean, it was still a good buck. It was like a 180-inch buck yeah but, yeah so it's I mean, no slouch so yeah. i mean still a good yeah. one still yeah. a good one but um he was like good luck i was, i saw one or i saw um one buck in five days and i shot it and i was sent i'm sitting in that seat heaven forbid i wasn't i wish i would have fallen asleep later so i was still asleep when he said that because then you started to worry yeah i was sitting there and i was like huh i was coming down here to hopefully 
So, I mean, I knew it was a bad year. I knew, I knew that there was a possibility that I wouldn't get a big deer. But I was like, I mean, I figured that I'd at least see a deer. But if mm-hmm. they didn't see a single, but if they saw one deer in five days, or one buck in five days and you know killed it's pretty it, tough. killed it, I was like, uh, mm-hmm. no, that's mm-hmm. not what I wanted to hear. So went to bed that night, woke up early that morning, and uh, sorry. Well, woke up early. No, take a deep breath. I mean, this is this is no, an intense I'm story. No, I'm, I'm, on, of, I'm on the edge of my seat here. No, I'm just out of breath. Um, but woke up early that morning. <laughs> talking does that to me too. I run it right out of breath when I'm talking, which is nonstop, Bridger. So I get yeah. it. But Trust me. You want a drink? Yeah, I'm gonna hurry and take a drink. No, don't hurry. Take your time. Hey guys, Christy Titus here. Because I don't have the opportunity to get out on the ground to scout some of my non-resident hunting unit draws, I'm at home doing some e-scouting. Using Onyx Hunt lets me prepare for my upcoming hunts this fall right from my computer. And now you have access to 3D features and functions that are found within the app right on your desktop. Using Onyx Hunt to help you e-scout ahead of time means that when you hit the ground this hunting season, you'll have a better lay of the land so you can spend your time hunting and not trying to figure out where to go. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor and download Onyx Hunt and try it today. So we're, we're back in the hunt. It's, it's opening morning. Well... Opening morning for me, not opening morning of the actual hunt. Yeah, but your first morning. Yeah, out there. but my fir- first morning. Um, got woke up early, went out, um, and didn't see a single. The only didn't see a single living soul. Nothing. I no, not even a rabbit. I don't even think I saw an ant that morning. Oh boy. Nothing. If there anything, nothing if there was something that was living. It was hiding. I didn't see it. Well, maybe it heard you it, were coming, and it was everything was like. Uh, the I'm only out. living thing that I saw was us humans or okay. us in my group yeah but so we've spent we're out there till like 11 30 and then we're like all right we better come back so at like 12 12 15 finally roll back into count camp and this is just timing that i think it was probably isn't any what correct because i i had my phone down there but i was never really checking the time and if i did so I you're wasn't, just estimating this time yeah, right now i wasn't okay. i wasn't remembering the time i just go oh that's what time it is but but um but we start but we came back and ate lunch just like there's some hot dogs on the grill went out that night and that night we saw a lot we saw maybe 10 does mm-hmm and then we turn the corner and uh, and we see this little two by three and my dad's like oh buck and i i my heart skips a beat and i'm like let's shoot it and i look and my dad's like yeah we'll skip it and i'm like well at least we saw one yeah yeah i get back in the seat and i'm i'm already unbuckled so i you're sit, ready to go yeah i'm i sit back down and my dad's like hey chad where is because we we're in this guy named Ta- um chad's truck he was like chad Where's the best hunting spot in the Arizona Strip on like 14 or on like 13B or whatever, wherever we were or where we are right now? Where is the best spot? And it was like right where we are. As a matter of fact, um, a few years back, um, I had this fireman. Um, I was or I was guiding this fireman and he had gave me the description of his deer. And all of a sudden we turned the corner and this deer standing there. Oh, what boy. this what he wanted? No. Oh, no. Okay. This comes later. Okay. okay. But um, it turn, he, they turned the corner and the deer was st- that deer was st- sit or just standing in the trees. Everything he wanted, but better. He looked at it or took one look at it and went, "Nope, I want to pass it up." And he was like, "You're crazy. You're crazy. You don't pass up a deer like that." And he was like, "No, I thought it'd be bigger." What I said, I'll I'll skip. I don't, he didn't tell us what happened after that. Yeah. If I were, he may have gotten another one, but I, if honestly, if I were a deer and found out that he skipped up that, I'd be like, yeah, no, you just aren't going to get one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> bad deer but karma. I'm, but I'm sitting in the back and I, I was like, well, or 
but Chad was like, I felt like God sent that deer down to that fireman. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting in the back joking around, and I was like, or just classic me, I was like, well, if God sent me a deer, I'd shoot its face off. <laughs> Little did I know that would come true about mm, two minutes later. Yeah. Two minutes later, we turn around the corner, we're looking around, and also my dad turns, the he- or turns his head like this out, out the truck, and my dad just goes, Oh, big buck, big buck. Stop, 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 big buck. And says big buck like 10 times in a row. So he was pretty excited. Yeah. And I look, yeah. my brother looks over and is like, oh my gosh. I look over and I'm seeing it. Well, Chad's, it's sitting here behind a tree. And the, uh, the top of the hill's here. And Chad's sitting there. Where is it looking at the top? And my dad's like, Chad, it's right here. And he's like, where? And he finally looks down and is like, oh, holy crap, it's right there. <laughs> so we... So my dad was trying to be, or er, so we grab, grab the gun, get out, get in the tripod, and I don't think I've, my, I don't think I've seen my dad set up something so quick in my life. Yeah. He got that thing set up, got in. I was, or er, my dad was like, "You want him? Yep. Can I shoot? Yep. Click. Pulled the trigger. It didn't go bang. Oh no. The gun clicked because we were trying to be so quick and then quiet. On top of that, yeah. we didn't actually jack a bullet. Or er, my dad. My dad is a keyword. My dad didn't actually. Oh, the dad. The my, dad's going down for this one. My dad <laughs> didn't. My dad didn't actually jack a bullet into the actual gun itself. Gotcha. So it went click the first time, and I was like, "This is probably a two hundred inch deer. If this gun does not work, I will be. I'll grab my dad's pistol off his hip and headshot it if I need oh, to. Yeah. I'm not letting this. Just, I'll, just, I'll say I shot at this gun. He's a marksman with a pistol too. I'll, he does like, it all. Like I am not letting this deer live. It. The longest it'll live is for another five minutes. It ain't living for much longer. <laughs> so yeah. my dad makes sure he gets a bullet in there, gets lined up. All right, ready? Wait, I need my earplugs. And I was like, crap, they're in the back of the truck. Eh, no time. Well, the deer had heard the click. Uh-huh. And it, the deer's, um, the deer just, or because we had talked about, or cause, um, I left on out in the first shot. I was like, well, where do I shoot him? Because we had talked about, or we had talked about, fi- or broadside, we had talked about frontal. Every single position other than curled up in a, or curled up in a ball like a dog facing. Curled com- up in a ball at 30, 30 yards. yards. 30, 30 <laughs> yards off the road. Curled up like a ball. Uh-huh. Or curled, curled up in a ball like a, or like a dog facing yeah. the complete other way. And Chad's like, just shoot it in the main body. Because the way it was, no matter where I hit it, it would go, it would hit an organ. It would kill it. So, get ready. Wait, I need my earplugs. And I was like, crap. Cooper, plug my ears. So he just reaches forward and just, boop. Cooper, and Cooper's my brother. So he just reaches forward and just. Plugged your ears for you. Good old. Because your two, mom had coached things. you pretty good. No, well, my mom wasn't even there. I know, but she but, had told you to wear ear protection. So yep. you were a little concerned about that. Yep. So my brother, yeah. so my brother just goes. Hey, what and a what a team! This was a real team effort. So we're so we're three people huddled in a five by or like a four by four square basically. Uh huh. I'm like, all right, bang! Its head just sits there and just you know, punk. So it but, never even stood up. Yeah, no, but it it almost got away because that first shot when I when it clicked, it had heard the click. Yeah. And it was curled up in a ball facing the other way, and it was like. Or like, you know in your dreams when you're dreaming about a big buck and it turns its head to the perfect shot? Yeah. Yeah, it just and turns its head, like, trying to look back to us. We're dead behind us, so it can't see us. Mm-hmm. It turns its head, and worse, my dad's sitting there about to pee his pants. He's like, oh, my gosh, this is the biggest deer I've ever seen. So, shoot in. Bang! Heads, head drops, and uh, my dad... My dad was like, Bridger, you did like 10 handsprings and a double back flip yes. and ran. So, but they were yelling. I was like five feet away from it. And my dad was, was like, Bridger, stop. It may be alive still. So I stopped, sat there for about two minutes. Did you just say you did a double handspring? Basically, yeah. <laughs> I was happy. I, I was, let, let's just say I was, let's just say I was happy. Yeah. But finally get to it and. That was pretty fun. And then yeah, uh, your dad sent me the video, uh, yep. your recovery and then, video. Yep. So, and, but we filmed two videos. My dad filmed one of me shaking. Like, I was shaking for the next hour after I that. I bet, yeah. And I was shaking for so long. Uh-huh. But my dad filmed me shaking, and then um, my, or I was like, Dad, can I make one exception for the SH word? And I was like, all right, fine. Not knowing what I was talking about, he was like, 
hmm, whatever, right? Whatever, just say it. And I was like, holy, yeah. S-H word. Can I say it? <laughs> you, you can say it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. You can, it's fine. He, right. he really but, wants to set this one home. But, but, I was, but I was sitting there and my dad was, or I was, my dad was like, all right, make it count. And I was like, all right, holy shit. <laughs> this, I mean, just, the rest is history. It was The so rest fun. is history. That was but, it. He dropped the SH bomb, did yeah. not get in trouble. And he but, can tell the story whenever he wants and say it again. It's a great, it's a great memory. As long as I have my parents' permission, I can That's say That's right. It. Yeah. But, <laughs> so when you, uh, when you walked up to this thing and you put your hands on them, I mean, what was that like? Um, I just grabbed the antlers because I'm, it's actually kind of funny. Um, I hunt deer. I have a deer. And yeah, I'm allergic to them. Like, oh, so I'm yeah. severely allergic to deer. So yeah. I couldn't touch it. But yeah, it was. My husband's allergic to dogs and cats. So, well, deer also. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But so that I couldn't get too close. And Chad's sitting there. Got to get the perfect photo. Like, basically, basically tell me to do this with my deer. Like, and I'm it. like, and I'm like, if I hug it, you're basically sending me to the hospital. Because yeah, all my eyes will swell shut if I hug this thing. I mm-hmm. swear. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, that was a pretty fun hunt. But the thing that I just said, the one that we may need to bleep out, yeah. if if you want your podcast to be PG, <laughs> <laughs> um, I had said it, but my dad wasn't filming, and he was like, I don't care who you are, that is that is funny. Yes. So he was like, all right. So he did Bridger, a little camera Bridger. work a little weekly. Yeah, he was like, no, my dad was like, Bridger. I'll make it count again. I'll give you another exception for it. Just say it again on camera. So, sure enough, mm-hmm. two t- said it twice that one day, and that felt Ooh, good. Yeah. <laughs> that felt yeah. good, especially for that buck. But in total with this buck, I've said it four times. Wow. This podcast, another podcast, and then twice that this, day. Well, we're, really, we're really working that word <laughs> into your vocabulary now. It's uh, It does feel good when you, when you do something like that. Yeah, sometimes when you kill a 200 inch deer it just I don't know nice. I don't ni- know feels nice to let an s-bomb go and <laughs> we're re- just real quick <laughs> I'll keep that in mind right. when I shoot a 200 inch deer someday because I'm I'll still ke- not there I'll keep that in mind when I kill a giant white tail that's we're gonna do that we're gonna get you a nice buck we're gonna have a yep. great hunt it's gonna be a lot of fun I'm really looking forward to it so what um what advice do you have for other kids that are wanting to do some hunting that might be kind of in the same situation as you are. Able, able body or non able body. Well, I think that we should talk to kids your age that maybe have non. some ability issues. Yeah. Um, I've learned something with my life. Even if you're disabled, don't let that stop you. I've learned that. I've learned that personally. Mm-hmm. Don't let. Even if you're disabled, don't let it stop you. There are some things like jumping on the tramp I don't really do anymore. Yeah. Like there are some things you really can get hurt. But sometimes if you want to go out hiking, even if you're disabled, go, I don't know, go get a mountain bike. Because even if you're disabled, you can still bike. If you if you are, say, you're, le- you're paralyzed in your legs, go out and get one of these or a track chair and you can mm-hmm. still go out and it's so like there are ways to make you do what you want to do even if you're disabled. Yeah. There are lots of ways I've figured out. Mm-hmm. Adapt, improvise, overcome. Yeah. You don't yeah. let anything slow you down, do you? Not much. Not no. much. There are a few things that I can't do, like jumping on the tramp. I don't really do that too much anymore because I hyperextend my legs too easy now. Yeah. Because you're growing probably. Yeah. Well, I won't get too in-depth with it, but let's just say a while ago I was on the tramp with my friend and we hit... It's or just right. Both my legs hyperextended, mm-hmm. and I was off of school for a week because mm-hmm. of it. I could barely walk. Yeah. And ever since then, I just kind of er, every one in five times I'm on the tramp, I just locate or I hyperextend my knees. Yeah. So that's all I'll say about that. I won't get too in depth with that. Yeah. No, it's better. There's certain things that I avoid. Yeah. Uh, because I'm old, um, and it hurts now to do them. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But anything else? No, I, I think that that's great. I think it's great what you're doing. I think that you're a really good role model for kids and um, that you're getting out there and hunting and not letting anything in this world slow you down. And, and you, you do do everything. You showed me your battle wounds from your knee stitches the other yeah. day. Yep. Slip a little. Yeah. One part of my syndrome is I'll, I'll be walking around in the rain with my snow boots and I'll 
slip and nine stitches in my knee later and like look at this oh sorry i kicked your chair you're okay like nine yeah nine that's stitches, a pretty good nine one. stitches later i have that or i'll be in vr playing a parkour game and or with a deer mount and i'll slap my hand down and cut my finger open uh-huh. yeah you got to start being a little more careful Eh. It's at least I was having fun when I cut my. That's exactly. I don't want to be sitting there and hurt myself. If I'm gonna hurt myself, I want to be having fun Mm -hmm. at least. You want to live life to the fullest. Yeah. You want to have all the adventures. Yep. And I've and my dad told me um chicks dig scars. That's true. And I think and I think that's worked. Well, it worked for me. (laughs) I mean, yeah. I you so you had my heart at the fun dip. I'm not gonna lie. That was. (laughs) That was that was the jam, the fun dip, and yep. and the fact that you you know were so thoughtful for your mom, you know, or getting her a Valentine's gift and yep. taking care of your lady, and <laughs> she's your main lady right now until you get married. Yeah. Uh, well, f- I have to approve your wife though. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. I bet what I choose, you will. I bet you. I bet you will have the same agreement on whatever lady you choose. Yep. I'm sure. The rise in participation of women and kids in both hunting and shooting sports has encouraged firearms manufacturers to produce rifles that offer out-of-the-box adjustability. One of the many reasons that I love Ruger firearms is that they manufacture rifles for everyone. Many models like this Ruger Hawkeye Long Range Hunter feature spacers that can be easily added or removed from the buttstock of the rifle, providing a comfortable fit and ease of use for all responsible citizens. I'm a proud Ruger American, and you should be too. So Utah Disabled Outdoors, what do you do with them exactly? So it's, it has a few names, but so do Utah or do Utah is okay. what we call it. Um, is a non this is just off the top of my head, is a nonprofit organization that um, we just take all the profits that we make and put them into other hunts. Like right now, it's kind of hard to see with my deer, mm-hmm. but we're currently raffling away a 6.5 PRC and a pair of Vortet, or a nice, or we're a 6.5 PRC from the Christensen Arms yeah. booth, and then a pair, uh, or a brand new pair of binoculars from the Vortex booth. Okay. We're raffling away, so it's it's like twenty dollars for five raffle tickets or something like that. Gotcha. But we, so like all the money that we've made, so like one of the days we made like three thousand dollars. We'll take that three thousand and go. All right, we'll like we have a disabled shed hunt coming up where. Or where it's a guaranteed, you'll guaranteed at least. There's like a limit of like 15. Mm-hmm. Was it? La- it was last year. Of people. No, sheds per people. Oh, or per, okay. Per person. Okay. okay. But it's not like a normal shed hunt where it's walking around and you won't get get that many. It's you can go. Well, I have this bucket of um sh- old sheds that I don't want. Here, take them, and we'll take them and go throw them around a hill and go do that. Okay, so it's so like an Easter egg hunt, kind of. Basically, yeah, but yeah. for sheds. Yeah, and we that's did fantastic. it last year, and it was we did it Very last fun. year, and it was pretty fun. So, would you encourage other kids to look into organizations like, like Do Outdoors? Yeah, yeah. If you're disabled, definitely come check us out next year, or especially next year, come check us out because we'll have bigger booth and say so. Like you know how earlier I was talking about, like if you're say paralyzed in your legs mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, there's this other organization that we work with called, um, what was it? What's the other organization you work with called? Oh, um, Compassion Mobility we also work with, which this is where um, this, it's, this is called the Wrangler um, came from because I had road run one around, so we went to the booth, and we were going to walk out of there with one one way or another, but mm-hmm. they donated but they donated this one to me, but they work with, like, they do track chairs for the mountains. They do this one more for street and getting around like they do. They have bikes that are a two-seater bike that you don't, that the other person doesn't need a pedal. It's mm-hmm. just you, and it'll still pedal the exact same amount. Mm-hmm. Sorry, my hat's. It's okay. All right. Um, but, but they're just, they're they're allowing people to be, to be mobile and do the things that yeah, they want to so do. Say, yeah, so if you're, you can't walk or you're missing a leg and you struggle with walking, mm-hmm. 
you can get this to like I've been ripping this thing around everywhere in the house. Yeah, I know though. you've been giving your yeah. dad a heart attack all weekend. Yeah, He's afraid you're gonna run someone yeah, over. Yeah, and then we have <laughs> and then we have like track chairs. It's literally just a wheelchair mm-hmm. that just like huge like snow tracks on them. Yeah, on the side, and then we have one with like a snow plow on the front. Like, so it basically just helps you get around. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty. I'll. I like my Wrangler. It's pretty fun, but yeah, it gives it, you a lot of independence, huh? Yeah, it, let's yeah, let's just say they're not cheap. I'll no. just say that. No, they, but, it, all this stuff's expensive but for some, sure. But sometimes, but sometimes it's worth it. It is worth sometimes it. Sometimes, if you, no matter the cost, sometimes if you want to get your child out places, sometimes no matter the cost, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, and you're uh, you're able to conquer a lot of things because With, of the abilities. You know, that compassion yeah. uh, mobility provided you, you know, this machine so you can yeah. get around the convention. Like, and like, for instance, on like Halloween, mm-hmm. um, me and my friend put five and a half miles on it because usually we had hit half my neighborhood. Just my mom would pull me and it would get so exhausting. But this year I, I drove and my friend just hopped on because I have a metal bar on the back. She just hopped on and we hit every single house. Like we just had, raided we the had, candy. We had the map. We have a. We had a map of my entire street, and we hit every single house in my entire neighborhood. So you're learning some land navigation while you're doing this yeah. too, huh? Yeah. Good. Good mountain skills that you need. Yeah. You can, you should teach me some. If I don't have my on X, I get lost. So it's really important for me. But so your my major takeaways from this are. If there's a will, there's a way. Yes, exactly. If there is a will, there is a way. And that you're living proof that even at 11 years old, you can, well, you were 10 at the time, weren't you? 10 when I shot my deer, yeah. 10. At 10 years old, you can get out and you can accomplish just about anything you put your mind to, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And you're you're a great role model for other kids to, to be able to follow along. And yeah, and it, sometimes you, like, if you looked at, like, Christy... You know I'm. You obviously know I'm disabled. But if you looked at me right now, would you say I was disabled? No, you don't. No, look disabled. but yet, yeah, but under this, I have my braces, mm-hmm. and I can. Hopefully, yeah. this doesn't creep anyone out. Oh and boy. I can, <laughs> and I can flip my leg upside okay. down, and <laughs> like, it, like to the naked eye, I'm not disabled. But if you really get to know me, I am. Well, you're just really very mobile. You have a lot yeah. of mobility with your legs and your joints. Yes. I've tried to stay active as much as I can. And you're doing a great job. But some sometimes when my parents go bear hunting or something, I'm like, I'll stick to the basement playing video games yeah. that day. Sometimes it's exhausting being out there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. You can play video games. And, you know, I think it's great that you are able to have the decision and the freedom uh, to be mobile when you want and do the things that you want to do and you get to make that choice and it's yeah. not that your body's limiting you all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a nice feeling. It is a nice feeling. Gives you a lot of confidence. It does. It does. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to go on our hunt, you guys uh, that are watching this. How do but kids reach out with you? Is it through the DO YouTube then? Um, YouTube or what we, or um, you can go to... Um, at Do Utah on Facebook. Oh, do D O underscore Utah um, on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. And then with YouTube, I I'll, I forgot, but I bet YouTube information is on. Yeah, you guys there. could just Google it in YouTube yeah. D O Utah yeah. and find and it. And then if you're disabled and want to reach out, just reach out through there, and you'll contact one of us mm-hmm. and don't, you guys don't know who but you'll hit one of us yeah somebody somebody will get in touch with them yeah. and so if you guys have kids or if you're at home and you have an adventure that that you want help with that um, you're just or if you're disabled and even if you're not disabled and you just want to help out we love having volunteers with anything mm-hmm. i mean we have people we have people even on our team that no disability at all but they just want to help out, mm-hmm. and like we've had like with the like with the shed hunt or with the shed hunt and the um, the top shot and all these events that we mm-hmm. do, we always get a bunch of or you, most of the time we get a bunch of able-bodied people that are like, hey, I'll if you need I'll pack I'll put this kid in my backpack and I'll hike him up the mountain if you need. Like they're just they're willing to help. Mm-hmm. 
That's wonderful. And in this time, that's hard to find. It's hard to find people, especially now. Yeah, able-bodied people that can volunteer their time and resources and, and help out also, which is important. Sorry about the hat. There You're was okay. Something was in it with the headset, and it started hurting. I get it. I do. Well, Here, are you? Uh, do you have anything else compelling you want to throw in there? No? You feeling pretty good? Yeah. If you have any other questions, I can answer them. No, I, I feel... I pr- feel like we did a good job on the podcast here we're gonna we're gonna do this again after your deer hunt uh in 2023 we got a year and a half to to plan that but we're gonna get you all lined out and we're gonna have a good adventure so thank you all for joining me and bridger for this episode of the wild and uncut podcast from the hunt expo in salt lake city it's been fun stay tuned for more from bridger we're gonna be doing a hunt in 2023 so 2024 He's going to be live on TV. Just watch out. He's going to make his television debut. It's pretty exciting. Oh, I already have. I've, oh, boy. I've been on the news. I've been on the news and TV, and I've been on all sorts He's of things. He's an old pro, but we're going to be a debuting on my show this time. This will be a different debut, and I yep. can't wait to go hunting with you. We're going to have so much fun. And uh, I just absolutely love you, and I adore you, and I really thank you for making the time in your busy schedule to showcase your beautiful buck with us and uh, your story. Yep. I have one more thing to say. Okay. If you thought me in this interview was funny, go check out Bridger Shorts on YouTube. It's B-R-I-D-G-E-R, all uppercase. And then Shorts is just, it's not uppercase. But I currently have 100 subscribers, and it's my face, like, basically just... Okay. So if you if you memorize that you'll you'll see it. You'll, we'll you'll be able it. to find you on there. We're yep. gonna go find Bridger. I'm gonna subscribe to his channel, and all of you should as well because uh, this kid is really full of one-liners and is very funny. So um, we love you and um, are very thankful for you. So we will uh, see you soon. All right. Peace out, everybody. See ya. <laughs>Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.